prisoner transport vehicle suddenly breaks sharply. The prisoners and guards fell down uncontrollably. A burst of gunfire ensues. A gush of red liquid also erupted from the cab. Villanelle was still observing the situation, but that's when a female guard killed her partner. The guard uncuffs Villanelle. That's when there's a loud bang behind them. The smoke clears and the car door is opened. Villanelle receives the call and escapes from the prison. She smiles with excitement again as she watches the bodies litter the silent streets. But her cellmate, who had just been rescued with her, didn't know where to go. She says she doesn't want to be free. This was a shock to Villanelle. She said she'd rather die when a gunshot rang out. I didn't think her wish would come true so quickly. Villanelle put on a helmet and got on a motorcycle. She was taken to the designated location. But the contact was not Constantine, as she thought. The man kindly introduced himself, saying that he had taken Constantine's place and became Villanelle's new contact. He also sent Villanelle, the latest target of the assassination. He said the target was a challenge. Then he rambled on and on with strange hand motions. He made Villanelle lose her patience. Villanelle doesn't like men who talk too much. She simply fired a shot to shut him up for good. But when she turned on her computer, she realizes that the target of the assassination is Constantine. Constantine had just arrived home when he heard his daughter calling him from upstairs. Constantine thought his daughter was playing hide and seek with him. Villanelle didn't hesitate to point her gun at the man who had been with her for years because Constantine had promised her when she finished her mission, she would be picked up and taken out of prison. But Villanelle was betrayed by him. But Constantine said he was protecting her because his superiors wanted her dead. Villanelle doesn't believe that easily. She knew Constantine's weakness as well. So she kidnapped his wife and daughter and hid them. She just wanted to do her job very smoothly and well. They had worked together for years as partners. Villanelle respected Constantine and let him choose the way he would die. Constantine consciously took out his pills and drank them with a glass of whiskey. Villanelle wanted him to tell her a list of names before he died. The 12, the top leaders of the assassins. She wants to know who she's been working for all this time. But Constantine said he hadn't reached the rank of gatekeeper. He didn't know the list of the 12. Then he told Villanelle that they were not family but were more like family. He tried to convince Villanelle with his words. Villanelle asks him to take his medication quickly, but then he suddenly slams the cup into her and knocks her down. The older, the wiser, Constantine knocks Villanelle to the ground and then quickly runs towards the dock outside the house. Villanelle got up and ran after him to the river in anger, but he was already gone in his motorboat. Villanelle angrily said she would kill his family. On the other hand, Nadia's death in prison cuts off Eve's trail to Villanelle and the Twelve. But as she persevered in her search for prison surveillance, she finally sees the familiar figure, confirming her first instinct. She knew Villanelle must be Nadia's killer, but the surveillance followed Villanelle's footsteps into a visiting room. An even more shocking figure emerged for Eve. It was her boss, Carolyn, a psychotic assassin meets a chattering girl. Villanelle's first encounter with such a difficult opponent. Irina is hungry. She has to buy her something good to eat. Since Constantine, the target of her assassination, has escaped, Villanelle has to kidnap Constantine's daughter as a hostage. But Irina is a chatterbox. And she is also fluent in various languages. She says language is information. And information is everything. Villanelle doesn't want to keep talking to her. She has to see an old friend before she goes to kill Constantine. Irina laughs at the fact that Villanelle only speaks one word of Mandarin. On the other hand, he found her next clue in Nadia's last note. She is Anna, a school teacher who has a deep connection with Villanelle. Villanelle's husband was the one who killed and imprisoned Anna. So Eve pays Anna a visit. Anna was Villanelle's French teacher. According to Anna's recollection, Villanelle was a very punctual student. She had a great talent for languages, but she was withdrawn and never interacted with others. And then took more care of her. However, when their relationship became better and better, Villanelle killed Anna's husband without mercy. Whenever Anna thought of this, she was in pain. A year after Villanelle went to jail, Anna heard she was dead. However, Eve had to say that Villanelle was still alive. At that moment, Anna remembered. A week after she heard about Villanelle's death, she received a package. She gave it to Eve to see if it could help her with her investigation. Eve opened the package. 
She found Villanelle's passport and a lot of cash in her coat pocket. She quietly took the passport when Anna wasn't looking. Eve tried to persuade Anna to hide somewhere else before she left. But Anna refused. Not long after Eve left, Anna's doorbell rang again. The girl standing at the door looked like she had no home to go to. The kind-hearted Anna took the girl back home. But it was Villanelle who came back. She used Irina to distract Anna's attention. Then she slipped into the room to retrieve her passport. However, when she found the coat, all she saw was a note that said sorry baby. She instantly realized that Eve had been here. But then Anna found her too. Villanelle immediately pulled out her gun. But Anna wasn't afraid. She looked at Villanelle's scarred face and was very distressed. At this moment, even Irina could see that these two had a very special relationship. Anna wanted to help Villanelle clean her wounds. She took out a gun in the moment she got the medicine box. She will shoot Villanelle's black heart. Irina didn't mind seeing the gory scene that followed. They said that the other one had seduced each other first. Villanelle then also raised her gun. She said she would kill Anna without mercy. But the next moment Anna turned the gun on herself and fired. Villanelle watched her former lover fall, but there was no trace of sadness in her eyes. What was more important to her at that moment was to find Eve. Eve had seen on the surveillance cameras. The last time Carolyn met with Villanelle in secret, she wanted to confront Carolyn about it. However, Eve saw Carolyn and Constantine in the hotel room at the same time. It turns out that the two of them are old acquaintances, and Constantine is currently being hunted by Villanelle. Eve's daughter was also kidnapped by Villanelle, so he came to Carolyn for help. Eve got a call from Villanelle before she had a chance to ask any more questions. She immediately rushed to the Rainbow Cafe with her passport. The hostage saw her father and rushed to him, but was tracked back by the assassin. Villanelle pointed a gun at Irina in public and had Eve throw her passport to her. She then went on to finish her job. Eve and Villanelle stood facing each other with their guns raised. She tried to convince Villanelle to have a private conversation. Instead, Villanelle chose to turn and leave. Eve's business trip was full of thrills and surprises, but her investigation into the killer group is going nowhere. However, Eve got Villanelle's address in Paris just before she was about to return home. The mentally disturbed assassin has just returned home to a home that has been trashed. Behind her, there was an agent with a gun aimed at her. She asks did you have a party or something. Eve had infiltrated Villanelle's room just a minute before. When she saw Villanelle's closet full of her own clothes, she was furious. Eve began to rummage around, smashing things and venting her anger. Villanelle's presence ruined her life, and the only thing she could do was to destroy Villanelle's apartment. Just as she was having fun, Villanelle returns. She immediately went to the tool shed to get a knife and a pistol to defend herself. Villanelle was a little excited to see Eve's masterpiece. Although Eve was holding a gun, but she knew that Eve would not shoot her. She says Eve likes her too much. Eve told Villanelle to sit down and have a calm conversation. Eve also put down the gun and Saturday down opposite her. She hesitated for a long time before telling her true feelings. During the time, they were chasing each other. Eve thought about Villanelle almost every minute of the day. She imagined what Villanelle was wearing what shampoo she used, what she would eat before work. She even imagined how Villanelle would feel when she killed someone. So she smashes and destroys things in Villanelle's apartment just because she likes her. Eve wanted to know Villanelle. She wanted to know what Villanelle really wanted. Villanelle wanted normal stuff. Nice life, cool flat, fun job, a someone to watch movies with. What Villanelle wants is just a normal and interesting ordinary life. But Villanelle knew she was far away from that. Eve collapsed on the bed. Exhausted, Villanelle picked up the pistol beside her and lay down next to Eve in silence. The two of them closed their eyes and enjoyed the moment of peace. Villanelle put down the gun in her hand. She turned around to face Eve. Eve also turned to look at her. They never thought they would look at each other in such a way. Villanelle reached out and stroked Eve's curly black hair and slowly moved closer to her. But then a dagger was pressed against Villanelle's stomach. Villanelle said Eve couldn't have stabbed. But this time Villanelle misjudged. The dagger sank deep into her abdomen. Villanelle was surprised. Her eyes filled with tears of sorrow. I really liked you. It hurts. Don't pull it. But then Eve pulled the dagger out of her abdomen again. Eve panicked and struggled as she watched Villanelle's pain. She got up to get something to help stop the bleeding. But when she came back again, Villanelle was gone. This concludes the first season of Killing Eve. Villanelle is the cold-blooded but lovable murderess. Eve is a very talented but emotionally complex female agent. The two smart women are attracted to each other. 
in the process of chasing each other and become indescribably obsessed with each other. They don't even need to see each other to feel each other's presence. They give each other life in a way that is more complex than romance. It's hard not to look forward to the rest of the story.